This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested Styro Pyro video. Specifically this crazy eBay green laser pointer mod from 1 milliwatt all the way up to 1400 milliwatts. <laughs> Wow. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. I recently bought some green laser pointers on eBay, and somehow they ended up even worse than my already low expectations. <laughs> so I'm going to tear these things apart and see what I can do to make them stronger. Now before I start tearing these things apart, I want to show you guys exactly why these things are such garbage. For one, the seller must not have tested them before shipping because They're broken. half of them don't work in the slightest bit. The ones that do work are incredibly dim. Perhaps the biggest issue is that these things can't even light things on fire. Like in this day and age, my laser pointer should be able to incinerate the things that it's pointed at. And honestly, anything less than that is quite embarrassing. Wow. There have been a lot of sketchy stuff that he's ordered on eBay, including a crazy pulse laser device. If you want to see my uh, reaction to that, I'll pin that one down in the comments below. But it's kind of buyer beware. There's stuff on eBay that you could get and might not necessarily have the proper safety equipment that comes with it. So you could seriously injure yourself if you're not careful. So not saying you shouldn't buy stuff on eBay, but just buyer beware. Now before I go on, I should probably say that the crazy stuff that you're about to see was done completely for educational purposes. And in fact, if you were to try any of this stuff at home, you'd probably die, so please don't try this at home. <laughs> Without further ado, let's tear this thing open. But first I have to set up my makeshift laser lab. I love this part of his videos where he just sloppily does something for dramatic effect. I know he knows what he's doing, but it's, it never ceases to be funny. You're probably wondering why what? I just plugged myself into the outlet. Okay, maybe well, that's because I don't, I'm keeping I don't know myself and my work area grounded to keep any static from building up, as this could fry the sense of electronics I'm about to break into. Now don't worry, there's a resistor there between me and ground to prevent myself from becoming a light bulb if I were to touch something hot. <laughs> I mean, that is a thing. There are rooms that static can be concerned. It's usually for a lot of sensitive computer type equipment where your own static could bring in. I mainly think of it with computers and just bringing in a lot of current that's over all of these little components limits and you could end up breaking something like that. But I guess if it's sensitive lasers as well, uh, it's interesting. This is the first video of his that I've seen that he went into this sort of thing. Though I'm usually used to seeing these sort of mats either on the floor or on little electronics workbenches, not this aluminum foil put screwdriver in outlet sort of device. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. These laser pointers are typically yeah. press fit together and usually come apart fairly easily with a vise. Now here I've pulled out the laser module and exposed the driver. Now notice there's actually a small part on the board that looks kind of like a screw. Now this thing is actually a potentiometer and it controls the amount of current going into the pump laser diode. Now hopefully turning it will give us more power. Let's see if this little mod's gonna work. It's interesting seeing like potentiometers that that's small on things. I mean there's a massive potentiometer for the voltage releg regulator on the main turbine for a nuclear power plant and <laughs> it's uh maybe I'm just used to working with ancient technology in the in the control room, but it it essentially does the same thing. First, I better put on my laser goggles. That way I'm not instantly blinded. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, there's that pathetic output. But let's see what happens here. Oh, wow, it's, it's definitely brighter. Let's see if it can burn anything. <laughs> yeah, it barely stings at all. Really, the first thing you test and see if you can burn is you put your fingers in front of it to see what it feels like. <laughs> Never change, Styro Pyro. Never change. This thing has a long way to go before I'm satisfied. Even with the potentiometer cranked all the way up, it still just isn't making enough power. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I'm going to need to make my own power supply. I went ahead and removed this crappy little driver. Now I have the pump diode hooked directly up to my variable power supply. If it proves to be tough, I can build my own driver for it that can handle high power. All right, let's see what this thing's capable of. Let's see. 
Okay, there's a little bit of output. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. That's a lot brighter. Nice. Although still, I, I think it could be a little bit better than this. Still sticks his finger yeah, in front of it. Yeah, definitely needs to be stronger. Let's keep cranking it up. Wait, is that it? Is it dead Did already? Did you short it? That's one way to say. Well, if it wasn't dead earlier, it definitely <laughs> is now. You have disappointed me for the last time, so now I must <laughs> zap you. Here I've wow. torn down the laser cavity to show the internal optics. Now, truth be told, this thing was doomed to fail from the beginning. But that being said, the technology inside of a green laser pointer is actually really interesting. So it starts by taking light from this uh, infrared laser diode and feeds it into this uh, neodymium-doped yttrium orthovanidate crystal. And that converts the light into an... It's interesting, neodymium is one of the more reactive ones, can be used in magnets, but like any other um, rare earth elements, it can be toxic if ingested. They are pretty sensitive and require careful handling, those, those magnets, but again, the main hazard is insulation if you're working in any sort of hot environment, just like any other rare earth element, like uranium, for instance. Now, this one's not radioactive, usually. There are seven staple isotopes that are common. Even deeper infrared. And then that is shown into this uh, harmonic crystal over here, which uh, doubles the frequency into green light. Now, this technology can definitely be scaled up to higher powers. But if I want, say, the brightest laser pointer in all of existence, then I won't be able to jam the necessary crystals and optics <laughs> into a laser pointer. Jam them so in I'm going to need something different. Right here I have the Nietzsche NDG7475 green laser diode, which is actually the brightest laser diode out there that can still be jammed inside of a laser pointer. Now this is the future right here. Now just to give you an idea on how fast laser tech has evolved that is cool looking. this is the kind of setup that you need to match the output power of this little diode just five years ago. Looking at... Running this thing bare would kill it in seconds from the waste heat that it produces. So mm -hmm. I pressed it into a heat sink by making this tasty laser diode sandwich. Next, I solder it to this sandwich. tiny buck driver in order to provide current regulation. Now, the laser diode itself is rated for a max of 1.8 amps of current, but I decide to push my luck a bit and feed it 2.3 amps. Now, this should give me about 1.4 watts of output power, which is downright terrifying for a laser pointer. I'm going to make sure I haven't killed it by testing it on this power supply. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, on the final product, I'll use a <laughs> lens to converge all that output into a tight beam. Looking at this, looking at these green glowy things, I could tell that this is what a lot of people think of when they think of things that are radioactive, green glowing gamma radiation that's going to turn you into the hole. Um, well, technically this is radiation. Mentioned infrared and of course visible light is radiation, but this isn't ionizing radiation. It's nothing like gammas. It's not going to strip ions off. But that doesn't mean it can't be dangerous. The main hazard is going to be um, injury to the eyes, as Styropyro regularly points out. So it's just like anything else. Treat the system, what you're working with, with the right amount of respect, the right amount of safety equipment, and you can be perfectly safe. Now building a laser pointer of this size is actually pretty tricky. In fact, all my first attempts at building a pen laser were complete failures. But now I've done it a bunch of times and have a pretty good feel for what's going on. Now that being said, this laser pointer is going to present some additional challenges. The biggest is this uh, puny little switchboard here. Like, if I were to use this switch to try firing up that giant laser diode, like, it would just destroy this thing. <laughs> like, that's the equivalent sure. of using my pulse laser power supply to power up a light bulb. Ugh. For those of you who don't know, pulse laser, pulse lasers can have some cr pretty crazy uh, numbers involving um, many, involved into the megawatt range. Now, that's because it's a pulse. It's for a teeny tiny fraction of a second, and... Watts are energy per unit second, so you're dividing by a very, very small number. Which is why these continuous laser beams are on the order of milliwatts, and pulse lasers, then you can get into the, or into the single digit watts for, or into the watts for really, really big ones. But the pulse lasers, you can get into the kilowatts, megawatts, for still a relatively small device. Getting into megawatts for a device like this, now you're looking at lasers for um, starting a nuclear fusion reaction. <laughs> it's not like I can just jam a bigger switch in here. There simply yeah. isn't the space for it. But luckily this is where the MOSFET comes in. This little MOSFET can switch up to 620 amps of current. What a time to be alive, right? 620 amps. I'll use lot. this thing to handle the brunt of the power switching. 
Then I'll use this puny little stock switch to signal to the MOSFET when to turn on. 620 full amps, huh? Yeah, usually with amps, a lot of things you work with, at least with little handheld electronics, are on the order of milliamps. So, that's a lot of current. I stripped all the components off the switchboard, and then added my MOSFET as well as some resistors. Now, actually jamming all this stuff inside the laser pointer turned out to be really difficult. In fact, I spent more time doing this than everything else combined. And lo and behold, here is the completed laser pointer. Now I'm using it just looks like a pen. <laughs> I've seen pens with those covers on it, but I guess you'd be a nasty surprise if you turn it on and think it's a pen. Using a glass lens and a threaded mount to make it easier to burn stuff. But there's still one last issue, though. The original laser pointer took two AAA batteries. And now, considering the new laser circuitry draws about 20 watts, these puny little AAAs just aren't going to cut it. But luckily, Throws the chemical out. engineers have come up with some awesome lithium-ion batteries, like this little 10440 here. Now, it's the same size as the AAA, but it's capable of many times higher peak output power. Lithium-ions are just a fascinating piece of technology. You can use them for little small handhelds, or you can make them really big and have them as uninterruptible power supplies to sensitive instrumentation in a nuclear power plant. And the reason why you have them really big on batteries is because if you lose power, you're going to want to have your instrumentation to still working without inter interruption to give time for your emergency diesel generators to start. They take about eight seconds, which is still pretty fast, way better than the ones from the days of Chernobyl that took a minute or longer. But that eight seconds, you still want to see exactly what's going on when responding to an event. So uninterruptible power supplies is something that a nuclear power plant takes very seriously. All right, here we go. Man, why do I even build this kind of stuff? Wait, what? Oh yeah, wrong laser pointer. Let's give that <laughs> okay, another go. I was go. gonna say, no way. Oh there yeah, we go. that's what I'm talking about. Now that's a laser pointer I'm not ashamed to use. It's so green. I don't think I can convey just how insane this device is. Just makes me think of the Hulk or Broly. Like just the very idea of a laser pointer having so much power that exceeds the highest like laser saber. danger ratings in the United States. It's just flat out stupid. Like there's no reason anything like this should Styro ever be made. Pyro class and yet laser. here I am with a class 4 laser jammed inside of the laser pointer housing. Now before I start incinerating stuff, I want to show you guys some cool fluorescence tricks. Like check out that really cool color change when I hit those fluorescent airzukas, as well as that mailing nice. sticker over there. And also I have this vial here of 2,7-dichlorofluorescein and it glows a really nice oh, orange. Oh, that's a fun orange. And wow, you can hear it boiling when it hits it. That's crazy. Wow. It's clicking kind of like a Geiger counter. Now it's time for the best part of the video, as I'm about to burn a bunch of stuff with a laser. Now, if you've skipped ahead of this point just because you want to see some stuff get blown up, well, you've come to the right spot. <laughs> now, Styropyro does a lot of crazy laser stuff in his videos, and you may think that it is quite complicated to learn. But did you know that there is a free and easy way to learn the math and science fundamentals behind what he does? This brings us to our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Let's say you want to look at math. Whatever your skill level, whether you are still in high school or are a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and solve at your own pace. This is designed for busy people. You can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes per day. I really wish something like this existed back when I was in high school. And it tracks your progress like you're playing a video game. You can get started for free for 30 days and the first 200 subscribers get 20% off an annual subscription by visiting brilliant.org slash nuclear. Just click on the link I'll put in the description. <laughs> sure, let's start with matches. Whoa. Little sparkly. Love flash paper. You're going to want to have good fire protection PPE on when you're doing this. <laughs> I wasn't sure how that was going. Look at 
look at that. That's just mesmerizing, isn't it? I wonder how he celebrates the 4th of July for New Year's. That electrical tape is satisfying. <laughs> what was that? It seemed a bit out of place. Using green laser on something that burns green. That's awesome. I'm just gonna redirect all the people that think green glowy stuff is exclusive to nuclear to this video. Just to put some numbers behind how bright this thing actually is. Here we go. A typical one milliwatt red laser pointer has a luminous flux of a little under a tenth of a lumen. Now a green laser pointer comes in at about three lumens. And now my new laser pointer right here has a luminous flux of about 800 lumens, which probably makes it the brightest laser pointer in the entire world. Wow. Of course, the brightest laser pointer in the entire world is going to depend on what your definition of a laser pointer is. Now for lasers that fit inside of a two oh, AAA hose, like a this one is likely to be the brightest. Now, of course, this comes at the expense of a pathetically low duty cycle, as well as an incredibly short battery life. Now, that's all I have for True. today. True. But before I... Yeah, you're just going to use up that energy super quickly. Kind of the same sort of logic behind, like, really big fusion reactors, so stars way bigger than the sun. They only last on the order of millions of years as opposed to billions of years like our sun. Not really long enough for life to develop on whatever planets might be in their habitable zone, so... There's your trade-off. I love watching Styropyro stuff. Thanks so much for the recommendation. Um, I was glad to see a green one. <laughs> and thanks so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Again, the 20% off link will be in the description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.